Okay, go ahead and bring this uh, special emergency meeting to order at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, the agenda, if I can find it here. We do have a full quorum. Uh, no, no citizens' comments that I'm aware of. No, sir. Okay. Item number four, discuss and consider amending the City of Hondo de Mayoral Declaration of Local fourth uh, declaration that we'll be addressing. Uh, as you all know, uh, the governor's uh, uh, declaration yesterday pretty much brought in what we call kind of like a soft uh, stay in place or shelter in place. Uh, but the important things as far as this particular declaration is, uh, first of all, uh, you'll all receive the list of essential uh, of businesses and employees and that kind of thing that, that that are that do not have to stay in place and that list is very lengthy and it covers a lot of different things but it's also very gray in many areas uh, for instance we talked about construction uh, it doesn't really say exactly that construction can carry on but in so many places it talks about different types of construction workers and that type of thing so we consider that to be be something that would be be essential but uh, as I said you'll have a, a lot of people will question whether or not their businesses uh, are included in this <clears throat> staff's going to do the best that they can to respond to that however in the declaration you'll notice a, a, a website that uh, somebody can go to to find out particularly if they uh, if they are, are essential or not uh, the only other additions to the declaration include uh, one that uh, that closes uh, our parks we discussed that and decided there's just no way we can sanitize the, the equipment and all on the on in the park so what, what we're declaring today is that the parks will be closed except for the green area and the and the hiking trails or the, or the, or the jogging trails mayor i'd like to make a comment on that for those that go out and actually run one of the recommendations that's coming out is that you actually put more than a six foot barrier between you and the person that may be walking on the track or running on the track as well because typically when you run you tend to perspire and breathe heavy and those droplets are how the virus is transmitted so if you happen to be out running on the parks trails or anything we do suggest that you keep more than that six foot barrier between you and anyone else. Mayor, I have a question also uh, in relating, relation to that because we're closing all parks, public and private, located in the city except all walking trails and green space located as these parks may remain open. So that would include our nature trail? Yes. And it would, in, would it include the downtown park? I mean the memorial park yes sir they can be at the green spaces but we're discouraging anybody from using the tables the playground equipment um, any exercise equipment that may be mounted in a park basketball yes basketball etc because park. again it's it's very difficult you can't predict when someone's going to come and use that equipment and not everyone is sanitizing between uses and this is a common way for the virus to spread <clears throat> i think i see that i think san antonio is doing they're taking the yellow tape and wrapping it around the playground equipment so nobody can use it so it delineates that equipment uh, uh, so and also on the basketball uh, i see where uh, houston i believe it is is remo removing the rims so they wouldn't be able to play basketball yes sir in houston they had non-compliance so if we end up with non-compliance we will be sending the park division out to remove basketball rims and also we we are closing the uh, golf course uh, I asked the city manager to get with Jerry and talk to him about it, and he said it's fine with him because he's having a hard time keeping people doing the six-foot distancing and, and that type of thing uh, at, the, at the course. So uh, we've elected uh, with y'all's uh, authority to go ahead and close the golf course. Is that in our declaration? It's going to be considered part of the park. I don't think it would be considered part of the parks, but I think it would fall under the same thing as the rec facilities and things that we just have Library. the authority to close. We intentionally kept it open before, but it's... Yes, sir. We tried keeping it open to encourage people to continue to enjoy outdoor spaces. <clears throat> However, unfortunately, uh, the limited use that it does have, 
Golfing is a game where people tend to gather and they are not maintaining that six foot space and staff is put in a position to continually have to go out and police the people who are playing. So it's probably safer and better at this point if we just go ahead and close the course. And talking about the essentials, uh, I've asked the chief for his people go around and see what businesses he think will have to close due to this latest declaration. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mayor. Um, after we re uh, received that request, we did go out and uh, we were able to spend a couple of hours driving around and trying to determine what businesses. Of course, you know, within the city of Minnesota, we do have several businesses. It's, it's kind of a time consuming to be out there, but we did locate some of the basic ones. So, for example, um, we'll be looking at pawn shops. Nails and cosmetologies, auto sales, uh, minus the service centers, if they do come uh, equipped with a service center, <clears throat> thrift stores, boutiques, gyms, um, flower shops, and of course, uh, I believe movie theaters are also falling into that uh, realm. Again, these are just some of the ones that we were able to put together. A lot of the other businesses fall under the essential portion of it, so a lot of them can remain open as long as they continue to follow the guidelines as far as um, example, restaurants, as long as you're able to drive through and, and uh, curbside and take out, as long as the dining rooms remain closed. So essentially, uh, there's not a lot of businesses that are affected by this latest order. I mean, we do have, again, you know, we do, if you go back and you look at the auto sales, for example, you know, we have two uh, dealerships within Hondo. Well, actually, we have one, and then we have the other one, which is an ATV dealership. So again, the sales divisions would have to be closed, but only the service centers would be available for service. Um, we do have a couple of nail places within the city, a lot of uh, cosmetologies. Uh, we have the smart styles, we have the, um, the landings, we have the gray clips, et cetera. Uh, thrift shops, we have a lot of boutiques. So we have about four or five boutiques within the city. And of course the two fitness centers, which is the rock and the uh, anytime fitness. And you're talking about the dealerships can maintain, keep open their service areas and all, but they have to close their sales areas. Correct. But they can sell online. That's uh, something that's been, uh, we've been seeing online and as far as on TV commercials and stuff, a lot of people are working around trying to get the, the opportunity to still continue to operate. And I believe that as long as they follow through with the online services and the delivery, I believe that there's nothing that we can do at this point regarding that. So, so for the actual instance, facilities remain closed. Yes, sir. All right. So, for instance, if somebody wanted to buy a tractor at the ATV place, they could do that. If they're willing to offer some online. sort of, uh, if they're willing to offer some sort of online service, then I don't see why they couldn't get that uh, situated. Yes. But you talk about the particular firm; they can keep their their shop open. Mm -hmm. Yes, the service centers fall under the essential portion of it. Any questions of the chief on what, what they've discovered that they're going to have to address? No, right. these, uh, these dealers that, these two particular dealers that we're talking about, uh, we have to close them. The, the, the cells. Except for the service areas. I but yeah, that's what I'm asking. But we have to. That, that's. That's not a choice. That's not a. They don't. We don't have a choice other than to do that. They're not included in the essential businesses because we've looked especially the sales, hard. De the sales departments of these dealerships is not included just they the service departments online. yeah the question is can they sell online with people in the building probably not but i don't think we're going to address that if, if if they're doing that i mean we're not going to go by and check and make sure there's nobody in the sales area just a friendly reminder to council, please try to speak into your microphones. We have several people on social media saying they can't hear you. Okay. Mayor, uh, those who are wanting to be added or have it clarified can check with the, if I understand it right, they can check with the Texas Division of Emergency Management as to their, if they want to be added to the list or make sure that they're Correct. I, I believe that there is a, I think they can go online and they can verify the information to verify themselves that, so they can get closure as far as that they are considered a non-essential versus an essential. So again, that's something that could be misinterpreted or could be redefined. That's going to be totally up to, to whoever the 
I guess, the upper portion of it. So, Council, this list was not put together by staff. It's referenced twice in Governor Abbott's, the two different places that you can go to see the essential business list. And if a business feels that they should be an essential business, that would be decided at the state legislative area, the governor's office versus at the city level. They would have to make an appeal to them, and they could eventually be added to this list that is referenced in the governor's order. And uh, we will be placing that, the governor's order, the council's order, and the order that's been put out by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as to what's considered essential businesses. All of that will be available under the COVID-19 tab on our website and also on our social media page. And at this page, and I, I asked the city manager to have some people in her in the city hall here pretty well versed with these essential services so that if somebody does call in maybe they can help them if they can't then they can refer them to to this uh, website and as soon as the governor's decree came out yesterday mm -hmm. we already started receiving phone calls well I'm sure there's livelihoods involved out there so uh, and that's a good segue to just remind everyone that also on the city's Facebook page and their website are small business administration loans and other um, things that are made available to businesses who are struggling during this time. There's also resources for employees who may have been furloughed or laid off or let go. And those are all available on our website as well. And we're making them available on social media. So we encourage those impacted by this disaster to take advantage of those, whether you're a business owner or an employee. Any other questions about the essential services list? As I mentioned, it's a gray area, and, uh, and the only way that we can satisfy somebody is to have them contact the <coughs> website that, that uh, can, can give them the answers they need. So. Mayor, exactly how are we getting all this information across to all the businesses and citizens of Hondo to follow all the rules and regulations that are submitted by the state or even by the city of Hondo? Well, we're using Facebook, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, some of us don't use Facebook. It's and, on uh, Facebook. It's also on our website. And also PD is making a lot of personal contacts, especially to the businesses. PD has been out doing knock and talks with several of the businesses. Uh, since the schools are closed right now, these uh, school resource officers are doing a lot of that. So we appreciate their efforts. Additionally, chief and lieutenant have made some contacts. Anybody that calls in and makes a complaint regarding, say, a business that they say should be closed, or if there's a group hanging out that isn't social distancing, we are following up on those calls as well and just doing information sessions with people. So we have been pushing a lot through social media, and um, I'm sure we could probably even do um, today an I-Info today or tomorrow, an I-Info notice to individuals who are signed up for that service to make sure that they know to reference one of these resources. Also mentioned that uh, our curfew language we had in the last declaration is also still good in this one. So we're still enforcing the curfew. The, I asked the uh, police chief the other day to, to give us a comment on how he would enforce that. And you want to elaborate on that, chief? So what we had sent out was more of a uh, kind of to redefine again as far as what our intentions are with the curfews. So. I know we had a couple concerns as far as uh, people getting jailed for the curfew. Um, again, that is not our intention is to jail uh, citizens out in the community. Our intention is to use it as a resource to be able to go out there and have something to stand on in order for us to be able to gain uh, voluntary compliance. So again, we've been using that um, and it's been kind of uh, one of those issues where we've discussed it with patrol staff. Everybody's aware of the situation, so we'll continue to, uh, to be working on that. The question I had came from the county judge. He was concerned about us uh, putting anybody in jail when the jail's already full and they don't want any more people out there than they have to anyway. So I think we satisfied that concern. Yes, sir. 
Well, that was one of my questions. That at the last meeting we had, you know, instead of jail time, just enforce the the uh, the, the fee, the fine, the fine that we 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 agreed on. Because I'm sure that the jails are. I, I hear some of them are letting people out because they're too full. San Antonio is. Yes. Well, and, that, and, and the concern was the enforcement, and I think we've, and again, we want to be as friendly and as helpful to <clears throat> citizens as we can on every, all of this because people are under a lot of stress right now. Kim, have you had any complaints on businesses? Yes, sir, we have. Um, and again, Chief and Lieutenant, those are my first phone calls when complaints about businesses come in and they go out and they make contact with those businesses. Um, so far, we have, uh, even though there have been some complaints come in, when they've made location, they haven't seen any violations. And then something else that I'd like to go back to to echo what Chief said. This isn't really about a punishment thing. This is about us trying to be proactive and make sure that we're empowered to let them go out and try to save lives because ultimately that's what all of this that this council is doing and that staff is doing is about trying to prevent the spread and save lives. Now that we've kind of moved forward in, in uh, more closures, um, daycares, are they being addressed? They're essential. So I believe, as far as I know, daycares and to include the child daycares are considered uh, I, adult. And, and, and I know that they're taking steps and and correct as long as they continue to sure. monitor the uh, gathering of ten or more social distancing. But I believe they do fall under the essential. Okay. And I think the stores are doing what they can to comply with this. I know HEB has come up with uh, uh, distance markers, and and uh, I know they're cleaning their carts and they're cleaning their. Uh, card machines and all that so and understand today they they came up with the fact that they're going to offer s deliveries to senior citizens during hours of such to such uh, for for groceries or hopefully you know things like toilet paper so HEB has done what they can I think to try to help us and again we'll continue to push that message on our avenues through social media and the website and hopefully word of mouth that some of this starts to get out and an HEB is obviously also doing a push. Uh, just another item, I was contacted by a public information officer from HEB today that said that they will also be working to sanitize their gas pumps. Okay. So they're taking an extra step beyond what council asked for and they're going to be working to sanitize the gas pump. So hopefully they'll be the leader and other fuel service providers in town will take that step as well. Unfortunately, the way we've had these meetings and talked about these declarations haven't been friendly to the newspapers because they seem to hit right after the paper comes out and then nothing comes in until next week. However, at least one of the newspapers is having a special online edition uh, on the weekends, uh, like they'll cover this meeting and sometime in the next few days on online where it won't be, where people, if, if they go online, they can, can get that information. <clears throat> I, I think I need to mention some mayor. Uh, I was there a couple of days ago at, at uh, Walmart pharmacy and they too are offering uh, roads. Uh, they'll, they'll bring it out to you, your, your prescription. Percent. So Walmart is also, as far as the pharmacy goes and stuff, I know that they'll come out to your vehicle and, and do curbside service for you. Thank you. So, I think that's very important. Yeah. Again, the seniors need as much help as they can get. Right. And we will try to follow up with Walmart to get whatever information they have as well and push that out through the website and social media. So our social media has skyrocketed recently because we are very active in posting new updates and information and things going on. And again, we, excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead. We met again today on, on, uh, on the telephone with the other mayors and the county judge and, and, and we're receiving constant updates as to what what our numbers are in Medina County, unfortunately, they're not changing very quickly because we're not getting the information we need from San Antonio where we have somebody go in there and get tested. But uh, I know the health department here is doing the best they can to try to keep us informed. Well, I just wanted to say that I know there's not a lot of people here and they probably don't even know about these emergency meetings that we're having, but I hope 
that people understand and realize that we're only doing this for the betterment of the community and the quicker we get things done and people do as they're asked to do, we will be over this in a matter of no time. Well, and I, if Mayor, if I could real quick, I will tell you that, that right now there are 143 people watching us live on Facebook and that's more than we typically have show up at a council meeting. So I'm hoping that by continuing to use social media as a platform, it continues to get the word out. And probably 95% of the, the citizens here are doing what they can to pertaining to this crisis. It's only a few that seem to, to not care about other people, but uh, most of the citizens here are cooperating the best they can. There's an additional 48 people participating via phone. Okay. Uh, I'd like, I guess I need to ask about a scenario, uh, Chief or uh, Kim. If <clears throat> nowadays we have a lot of, we have a lot of uh, split up, split up families. So if, if we're saying that <clears throat> we need to keep our kids at home, can, whenever you have, you have a split up family, Will the father or the mother be a, still be able to have their their weekend with the kid, or do they have to remain at the permanent home, or, or how are we going to handle something like this? So, I, so I think that you're referring more to a child custody, uh, child custody. So, with that case, what we're doing is what we're trying to work with the parents and let them letting them know is that. I think we have to do it as a case-by-case -case basis. It all depends on where the other half of the, the parent is, um, what is the requirements, what is the distance, what is the uh, the uh, the protocol, what are their rules as far as when they meet, where they meet. That's something that needs to be taken into consideration. As far as us trying to really enforce that at this point, it's going to be more of a kind of an education to where we let the parents know that y'all really need to come up with a solution civilly to try to determine what's going to be the best angle for the safety of the child. And at that point, and if for some reason they can't come to some sort of a decision, then at that point we'll try to step in, intervene, and try to determine what's going to be the safest um, opportunity and then document that so in case that uh, something does go into, say, for example, child custody court or whatever reason, uh, we have some sort of documentation that we can follow back and fall back on to try to explain why we did what we did. So, so again, bottom line, if it becomes an issue with either side, it's basically going to be a civil case. Not more of a civil issue at the moment. It's going to be more of a kind of a judgment call that we'll have to handle on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we'll have to, to look at all uh, angles of it and determine what steps are going to be needed. And at that point, we might have to intervene and say, look, we feel that um, if they can't come to a decision, we might have to make the decision and say, look, we feel that the child needs to remain at this location due to whatever reason this is whatever reason we're facing, and then document that to the T and explain to them why we're doing that. And then once the situation hopefully goes away and we're able to get, you know, resume back our normal lives, then at that point pick up and be able to follow through with that or follow up on it. So. Sounds fair. Thank you. Uh, Chief, <clears throat> how would you handle a, a situation where I'm asking because I saw this during the weekend like <clears throat> there was families having barbecue and there was I know there was more than 10 people around okay if, if, if one of your officers or you see somebody doing something like this how how, how are you going to approach the the individual so so the uh, command staff has been having meetings pretty much daily on how we plan to handle certain situations scenarios uh, so on in a situation like that, what we're trying to push out to the officers is understand that, you know, we we want to be, we want to use the best judgment that we can possibly come up with. If we do drive around and we do see a group of 10 or more or something that tends to want to maybe, you know, get higher than that, we are to make contact and try to use voluntary compliance and just explain to them and educate, look, you know, this is something that we need to look into. We observed it. We want to take action. We want to make sure that you all understand the rules and the liabilities that come with it. And also, not only that, the fines that can be imposed if you refuse to, to turn around and, um, and uh, break up the, uh, the gathering of 10 or more. Again, understand that we're not going to be, um, we're not going to be, we're not going to get to the point where we're going to be dragging people off the property and you have that then handcuffs and throwing people in jail again. The jail is real limited on what they can and can't take. We understand that. We know the reason behind that. 
And again, it's going to be more, it's going to be a offshore discretion and uh, to use the best judgment possible. So we just want to work with the community and uh, try to let them know the reasons why. Okay, I understand that, but what happens, <clears throat> your officer goes there, what happens if there's, say, 15 people there? What's going to, are y'all going to break up the party or, or? So we're going to we're going to request for them to break up the party. We're going to uh, request that they break it up. Um, of course, you know, ten or more, fifteen is, is going to be over the, the ten right. limit. Uh, that's going to be something that we're going to get with the property owner, whoever's in charge of that gathering, and explain to them. Look, we're sorry that you know that we have to break this up, but this is something that that we have to enforce, and we want to make sure that we gain every single possible. And maybe I didn't get people don't understand that it includes gatherings at home. It it does whether it's on public or, or private, if we see it in somebody's I backyard. It, but maybe the people don't understand that, and we need to <laughs> clarify that. that we, it's, so we do. Because they have to stay home doesn't mean that the 25 family members can go meet at one place. I understand, and also the officers do have copies of the declaration. They do have <coughs> copies of the, of the letters, and it's going to be something that we're going to try to educate them and explain to them that they need to follow the, the, um, the orders. I think it was an excellent question, Johnny, because I know... That is a problem, and and people I, I, I saw people, it over the people don't have anything to do and they right. gather and and that type of thing. Just want to add that our police department is our front on this whole thing, and they're going to be under a lot of pressure and stress throughout the next this whole month of April, I believe. I understand. And so I think we should appreciate that what they're doing, what they're what they're doing, because I wouldn't want to be in their shoes to have to enforce some of this. Any other questions pertaining to the uh, declaration? We'll yes, come sir. back to it here in a minute, but we'll go ahead and uh, uh, ask Ken to give us an update on what city the city is doing with our staff. So we're continuing to move forward and keeping our staff separated and running basically two shifts, one week on, one week um, remote work. And Public Works is continuing to keep their separated schedules, again, hoping to try to avoid any type of cross-contamination. We have sent out uh, several emails to our staff with respect to making sure that they're wiping down their equipment, and that can be everything from their cell phone to the steering wheel in the vehicle that they're operating and making sure that they're keeping those things cleaned. Um, because again, the virus on different surfaces can survive for a very long time. Uh, we are uh, launching a program today on our social media. It's not unique to Hondo, uh, but it is something that we saw and thought might be a good idea to try to encourage some of our neighborhoods to adopt the Be a Good Neighbor program where you find someone in your neighborhood who is either a senior citizen or has some type of health issue and they will either put up a green piece of paper, which means everything's great, you don't need to check in on me, a yellow piece of paper that says, hey, I could use some assistance, can you run an errand for me? Or a red piece of paper that is more in line with an emergency, or hey, I just really need you to come to the window and give me some social interaction. Again, we're not encouraging people to go into the neighbor's house or anything like that, we're just encouraging them to be a good neighbor and help out. So we hope that people will adopt that program and reach out to some of, some of our seniors and those with health issues throughout our community. Additionally, we're also promoting the Medina County Bear Hunt. I don't know if any of you have heard of that or seen that online, where you're encouraged to put a teddy bear either outside or in the window, or it could even be a big cardboard bear. And so that way, when the kids are bored or after school hours and they want to ride around just to get out of the house a little bit with their parents, they can drive through the neighborhoods and actually look for bears. There is a, a storybook called Going on a Bear Hunt, and this would be a great way to engage some of our younger kids because a lot of them are trapped inside houses these days and don't really have a lot of ways to get out and explore, and this keeps them safe. And then I also wanted to update you that our airport staff has been mandated through an executive order and through the Textile Aviation and DPS to track people who are coming into our airport from various locations 
whether they're on the ground for five minutes or whether they're on the ground for five days, if they happen to plan on staying here longer than 14 days, they have to go into self-quarantine. So our airport director, Ryan Elder, has reached out to all the tenants. So if they have a customer flying in or somebody uh, at their facility, they have to make sure that if they have flown in from somewhere that they actually register as having been here. And again, that was an executive order that was just sent out that's not included in the governor's decree. It's just something else that was sent as a responsibility that we have. We have been partnering with our businesses there at the airport to do that, and Ryan has done a great job of getting all of them the information. And in fact, we shared that today with some other airports to make sure that they were aware. Um, can't say enough that we have a lot of information on our website and the uh, city Facebook pages. It's not just the city of Hondo page. PD has things, REC has things, uh, the library has things, and some of these are unique to those different facilities. They're either activities or things that you can be doing at home while practicing social distancing and good hygiene. So please take advantage of those. Um, Unfortunately, we are going to have to cancel the Easter egg hunt that the rec division normally puts on. There's just not a good way to do that. I know that we had eventually, or we had talked about potentially doing a drive-through where every car that came through got a little goodie bag, but that would put the staff at the potential to be exposed to a lot of people and a lot of things. And at this point, we've taken so many precautions to keep our staff healthy. We just didn't think that it was a good and reasonable expectation or effort of them to do that. Um, we do continue to speak with the school on a daily basis and the hospital on a daily basis. The hospital is in need of masks and um, gowns. So if anybody who's listening or participating, either via the call or social media, we do encourage you, if you can sew, to please uh, look at some of the easier patterns online and perhaps make some of those, and not just for the hospital, but for some of our first responders. The PPE, personal protective equipment that's being issued through FEMA and the government right now is going to what's considered a hot spot. So rural communities are not receiving a lot of that yet. So that is in very short supply in local areas such as Medina County. And we do want to keep our police officers, our firemen and women, and our EMS staff all equipped to deal with this particular virus and also the hospital. So any um, input that any of the community members could have with that would be phenomenal. And again, I want to commend council. I know this is a great deal of your time to have to come and meet to get these updates, but they are rather important to the community. So I appreciate all of you taking time out of your day to come and listen to us continue to reiterate social distancing and good hygiene. So in summary, the uh, city is pretty much business as usual for right now on the, on the split shifts and the split weeks and, and all that, except for these uh, areas that we have to close, like the library. And, you know. and those staff, again, those staff are still working. So when we get the text or the social media post, why do I see, you know, six cars outside of the rec center? It's because they're inside continuing to do projects to prepare for when we can reopen and make sure that all of our equipment is cleaned, painting, you know, cleaning of the floors, the facility, the pool, preparing for all of those things that we hope to be able to engage in very soon. And I think we're all interested in public works, and we know they're still doing the things they normally do, like uh, uh, water work, water and wastewater and, and streets and whatever, just on a little lesser scale because there's not that many people doing it. Yes, sir. And in fact, um, if I don't know if you noticed today, but around the light poles to the west of City Hall, you will notice that there, uh, the median there around those poles has been dug up and fresh concrete poured. And we're going to continue to work with the Garden Club to do beautification of the plants and things around City Hall, and we appreciate them very much. Uh, can I ask a question about utility bills? Yes, sir. Uh, I know that everybody is struggling right now. What are we going to do about the utility bill that's coming up soon? <clears throat> 
So we put out a notice that we will not be assessing any late fees or penalties on those bills. That is something that has been a lot of cities and entities have done and that we will be working with those that are directly impacted by COVID-19. We've had some people who have called in and said, hey, I've been you know, laid off or furloughed because of COVID-19 and we're working with them on the utility bills and either putting them on payment programs or allowing them to pay a little now and continue to pay as resources become available. And again, this is a good time to encourage people. There are resources through the Workforce Commission um, the Unemployment Commission and also on our website for people who are struggling right now because they've been impacted by the virus. And we are not doing any disconnects at this time. That was my next question. I was reading your mind. Some cities uh, I've noticed are doing a little bit as far as some kind of help coming from the city financially uh, through the EDCs or whatever and we're looking at all that and, and uh, probably will be business with our EDC about ideas to help the, the person on the street. The small businesses uh, are pretty well being taken care of by the, by the federal uh, uh, act, but uh, people that are out of work and all, that's, that's not helping them any. So anyway, doing what we can, trying to stay ahead of, ahead of what's happening. What, what happens to the people that are on our cut off list regularly and now, with this happening, what's, what do we do with them? It's very hard to discern whether they're on the cutoff list because they're a habitual person. I mean, I, I, I do know that we could sit and say, yes, they're habitual. But if they came in and said, okay, well, I've been impacted by COVID-19, we don't really have a way to go out and necessarily assess that per se. Uh, we may ask for some documentation, whether that be a notice from their former employer or something to say, you know, I truly need this and this will not count for those that are doing this because they're impacted by COVID-19. This will not count against their two extensions for the year. I think that we ought to try to do the best we can with everybody, Kim. And that's, and that's why we're... Everybody. Everybody's going through a hard time, and I know it's going to be difficult for a lot of people to pay the utility bill on time. And uh, I'm glad that we decided not to do any cutoffs at this time. We are trying to be helpful. Trying to stay a little bit ahead of the game, but it's, it's every day we see changes in, in what's happening. And uh, like yesterday when the governor came out with his new uh, declaration. So anyway. Any other questions of Kim as far as what the city's doing? Well, it's been over a little bit over a week since we started making the adjustments on the operations side. Have we had any hurdles? The only hurdle that we had uh, was the one I mentioned when we did a follow-up. And at the end of this week, since this is the second crew, we'll do a follow-up again this week and see how that goes. I do know that there's been um, some difficulty with people adjusting to change, which is just a normal uh, we did have an issue where we try to keep a manager in City Hall at all times. So we're having since we're limited instead of having four supervisors here, the two supervisors are having to really work hard to coordinate. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't depending on, especially when I'm in office because I have other commitments that I have to be at and I don't want to keep somebody from being able to go to lunch. Um, but overall, operationally, I think we're continuing to keep up with everything. Again, the biggest hurdles have been, it's just change. Yeah. And change is never embraced fully or easily, especially in a stressful time like this. Uh, a lot of people wanna be home with their families. Um, we are abiding by the new FMLA regulations. There were some employees that uh, went into effect today and there are some employees that qualify for an additional two weeks of sick leave if they have to perform childcare duties and some other things. And we did work with our legal counsel to decide um, 
there are some exceptions to that rule for essential personnel. So essential personnel are, of course, your uh, majority of your public work staff are not eligible. Um, some of your administration, myself and the city secretary, the police department is not eligible for that. So we worked with the, the city attorney to refine that process, and that all went out to all of our employees today. We do continue also let me rephrase that. I continue to also send out kind of a weekly, hey, if you have any issues or anything, thanks for sticking together and thanks for being Team Hondo. Don't feel bad about coming in and expressing any concerns or issues you have. We are going to, uh, now that they were on back order, but we now have them, the digital thermometers. Um, we are going to start, I know PD's already been doing it, but we're going to start uh, citywide with respect to our employees scanning people to try if, to catch it early if they happen to be sick. We don't really want them coming to work and ending up with a mass spread of the virus within the city. Um, I know Mayor mentioned earlier we call this a soft shelter in place. If it comes to a point that we have to do a shelter in place, we will probably restructure a little bit of how our staff is coming in and functioning. Non-essential, like perhaps parks, facilities, some of those would be more of an on-call if we really had an emergency. I mean, if the grass grows a little high, it's not worth necessarily risking somebody's life for. Uh, we would re do a definite reduction in workforce, and that does not mean a reduction in pay or layoffs. That just means that we wouldn't be having them necessarily report to the buildings. So morale's pretty good? So far, morale has been actually really good. I know that um, there have been some people in town who have been generous, and either, uh, like this weekend, the employees that worked, there was a group that barbecued for all of them and, and um, let them come by and pick up food. That's awesome. And I know that there's a lot of entities that have continued to be thankful. And again, um, morale within staff is pretty good. It is a little difficult sometimes when, again, it's the same thing that you see on social media a lot, just like it is for staff, it's changed for the community. And sometimes they don't understand that the decisions are the enforcement is being made for the betterment and the safety of the community. So we really are trying to push that message that, you know, um, I know there were con some concerns the other day with respect to the teacher parade. And while we wanted to allow the teacher parade to take place, the original discussion was about a few cars and the next thing we knew, it was tens of dozens of cars, you know, and that created some traffic issues and there were wet streets and, I know that, you know, the misperception is that this was just us trying to shut down a fun event and it really wasn't. It was about safety and, you know, I'm happy for people to go through town being cheerful and honking their horns, maybe when they find a teddy bear or something. This is, it's not meant to try to be a negative environment. It's just trying to keep everybody safe. Are you having any problem with finding enough work for the people that are working from home? Absolutely not. I can tell you that um, both right now, since this building is shut, I've had far less walk-ins, and I will tell you that a lot of my staff is tired of seeing emails from me. They are getting a lot of projects that we have that have been put on the back burner because we prioritize customers first. And so we're being able to do some work on programs like reviewing of the UDC. Uh, Chief has been working on his volunteer law enforcement program. Um, we're continuing to put together council packets and being ready for our regularly scheduled meeting on April 13th. There's an abundance of work um, that is available for people to do, including some of it is just upkeep of our own facilities. Do we have any uh, employees that have uh, spouses that are first responders? Or We do. And a lot of those we're trying to work with, some of them may not fall because they're also considered first responders. Some of them may not be eligible, so we're trying to be flexible and work with them when their spouses are on um, duty as well. I can think of one in particular whose wife is a nurse, and so we're trying to work with him to balance his schedule with her schedule, but he's also a first responder, so... It's, it's just a fine balance for all of us. Good. Any other questions of Kim? I'd, I'd like to make a couple of comments. First of all, uh, Kim, I think that uh, be a good neighbor 
is really, really something that <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you're seeing something like that. And I do need to mention, and I, and I want to mention it uh, because I feel that these, we had two gentlemen that took charge and they made uh, barbecue out of their own pockets, paid for their, the food, and they must have served out over 100 plates. And it was Mr. Rene Reyes and Felix Dominguez. And they deserve a, they deserve a big thank you from the city of Hondo, as far as I'm concerned. That, that's outstanding. That's awesome. Was now that the, the one this weekend? That one that, that past week. Uh, 14th Street? Yes. I think they served over, I think I was told, over 300 plates. Yes. Wow. It was it was it was it was at least 200 plates from what I understand, and uh, uh, they did have uh, some people helping and stuff. But they were the two the two that took the bull by the horns and and uh, they like I said they paid out of their pockets. And I think that those are the kind of people that that we have in the community, and we do have help from the community. And this, absolutely, and the be a good neighbor deal is it's it's great, you know, especially like you said for these elders. Absolutely. <clears throat> I've got one other question before I, I get off the mic here. Uh, what is, uh, what are we doing or what is, can, do you know what's going on with Meals on Wheels? Are they out of commission or what? My understanding is Meals on Wheels is delivering on Mondays only and they're giving five days worth of frozen meals on Mondays. To the same people that were getting the meal prior to this? That were getting this. the meal prior, yes, sir. I'm sure they did close their, their, uh, uh, Kitchen. Eat, ki well, not kitchen, but where the where the dining area, because there were a lot of elders that went out there to that dining area. So, hopefully, they'll be delivering food to them or getting food to them. I also um, was texted a question from the internet that I think is important to address. If people do not have internet access, there are several internet providers, especially students, who are providing free internet access. Um, we'll see if we can get a list of those together and just put them on the internet, on our social media, of course, social media again, but, um, and maybe even include those in iInfo. I do know that the library Wi-Fi does reach to the perimeter of the building, so if you pull up outside, you can access the library Wi-Fi and get access to those resources and then contact those resources directly regarding internet service. That's not something that the city provides, but you know, I think that the more information we can push out to make this easier for people, we're not promoting any particular company or resource. We wanna give as many resources as possible. Does the library have access to that area in the back with the sitting area and the garden area without having to go through the building? I would have to check, Mayor. Um, one of the things that we'll be reporting on when we do our April 13th meeting is we're going to be looking at getting some additional security cameras. There were, believe it or not, two trees dug up recently and stolen from the library. So we may uh, wait until after the security cameras are up to make those areas available. I'm just saying they could go out there and sit and, and, and use that Wi-Fi at the library if it would be a nice area to... As long as they stay six feet apart. Okay, amen. Is that, that the only place where they they could connect Wi-Fi? Do we have that here at City Hall? Or? No, we our City Hall network is a closed network simply because it has all of our financial data and access, and we don't want anyone hacking in. So the library is the place that you can go in or go to. And I, my understanding is you can even get the signal over on Memorial Square some days. So what about the training center. Um, I don't know if it reaches to the parking lot or not. We would have to check. That would be a good place for people to be able to sit and do it. Other questions? Is our uh, workforce solutions still holding forth at the training center? Yes. They are? Yes. Okay. And we still have it open with one person? Yes. There. We have two staffers that normally office there, but we are separating them. Same reason as everybody else, just to be able to minimize impacts to staff. They're both on duty, just in different places. And we still have our uh, medical courses going on, because I guess that's online or whatever. I believe they moved online, yes, sir. But uh, we had to close the welding course. Yes, sir. There's, it's hard to weld online. <laughs> well, and, and, and the college uh, shut down all. Yes, sir. Uh, the college made questions. the decision that they would shut it down, and they were contacting the students directly for that. 
And all those cars that are parked there at the training center, is that people that work there? Or, because I've gone by there, there's... A lot of them are the people that work there, but they're in, in separate offices, like there's workforce solutions, and then there's city staff that go there at times. So they're in different places in the building. Um, Workforce Solutions Alamo, I don't believe, employs more than 10 people there at a time, but we are continuing to monitor how many people they bring in, and I'm sure they've set up their own social screening programs because they don't want to be exposed to the virus either. Is there anything else that, that you or Chief need support-wise? Chief can use all the support he can get from the community. The big thing right now is voluntary compliance. And um, again, I don't want to harp on it, but the teacher parade is a good example. That that decision was not taken lightly or made lightly, and I know that the police department took quite a backlash for it. And the decision was made not because we don't enjoy fun as well and understand that it's very hard on the kids and teachers who spend nine months together. But the police department is working very, very hard. And there are a lot of protocols that they have to follow. And again, we are just doing this because we do not want to end up in a shelter in place situation. Absolutely. And I hope that that message doesn't only reach Hondo, but reaches throughout Texas, because basically that's all that's left that the governor can do. And if we continue to disregard social distancing and hygiene and avoiding, you know, contact and all those, those things and limiting our trips, then that's the next step. Well, you know, Kim, those are things that people should understand that we're not doing it because we don't want them to do it, but in a, in a situation like that, could, could that be rescheduled for a future date where it's not? Absolutely, and what we're hoping to be able to do, and Chief and I had already discussed this, is sit down with the organizers and maybe put together a little different plan and make sure that parents and other individuals understand that you know, it needs to be a six or seven car parade and only the teachers simply because then it doesn't become a traffic jam issue. Also that day, it was slick roads. There, granted, it wasn't a torrential rain or anything else, but we've gone through a bit of a dry spell again. And when it rains like that, the dust and the oil accumulates. As you know, it gets slippery. And when you have people that are ignoring stop signs, that becomes an issue. So those are all things that can be rescheduled through the course of the year. Um, hopefully with better coordination with the police department, maybe we can even have PD lead it or something and, or maybe even the volunteer fire department would wanna drive their fire truck through, you know. We're all in this together. Absolutely. Thank you. No, thank you all. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to share information openly and freely. And April is going to be a very difficult month for all of us. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. And, uh, we don't know what, what's in store for us. So I do appreciate everybody getting together like this. We'll go back to item number four as pertains to the declaration. And I'm open for a motion to approve that uh, fourth declaration of the mayor and the city council. So, so move. We have second. a motion. We have a second. We have further discussion. <clears throat> all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you.